NASCAR needs to use the all-star race to try to figure out how to fix the short track package. We all know that the NASCAR Cup Series short track package is broken. You know it, I know it, your parents know it, your grandparents know it, and even NASCAR knows it. They went on SiriusXM NASCAR on Tuesday, and Ellen Sawyer said right now our biggest priority is making the short track package better, and they're going to work with Goodyear to try to create a tire that wears somewhat like Bristol, but not as extreme as Bristol, because at some point you do need a tire to last more than 20 miles. I mean, when you actually think about it in that aspect, where you're like, oh, the tires were failing around 40 to 45 laps into a run, and you're like, well, that's a half mile short track. So somewhere between 20 and 22 and a half miles, they were failing. Uh, most of you have a commute that is longer than that. And it's good. It's good that they know that this is a problem, right? NASCAR fans are all over social, all over the comment section being like, NASCAR doesn't care anymore. They don't care about this package, this and that. Trust me, Ben Kennedy knows, Steve O'Donnell knows, Steve Phelps. They are all abundantly aware that the package is not good. And they're working actively to try to fix it, but it's a fine line. So I have an idea. They need to take the all-star race and use that as an experimental race to try to figure this package out. I've seen some people on the internet this week and they were like, oh, well, this is kind of what the short package just is now. And we just have to accept that and try to make the best out of it. No, 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 we are not going to do that. You're probably the same person that orders a burger at a seafood restaurant or backs into the stall at, at Sonic. I can't trust you and I don't wanna trust what you're saying right there because there's always a way to make something better. And unfortunately, it's not great yet, but NASCAR is working on it. So they need to use the all-star race to try to make this package better because historically they've used the all-star race to try out experimental packages before. I mean, ultimately the all-star race served as the test ground, as a real world test in a race, a thankfully didn't count for points, to determine if the NA18D, that high downforce, low horsepower package would be viable. And I think we all agree that it wasn't very viable for the Gen 6 cars. And instead of actually trying to fix the car, they just went with a short term solution in their minds, which I would argue didn't really work. So they used that package and they debuted it at the All-Star race in 2018 and they experimented more in 2019 with it. And ultimately, I would argue that it didn't work. They did run that package through 19, 20, and then into 21 as well. And thankfully, the Gen 7 car hasn't needed to have that on mile and a half. So now that they're going to a short track for the all-star race and the short track package is inherently broken, they need to use this race to try to experiment. And for me, obviously, perfect world scenario, NASCAR is like, hey, all of the teams show up with engines that produce a thousand horsepower. It's never going to happen. The all-star race is just a tick over a month away at this point. Creating an engine for all 36 cars that run a thousand, that can produce a thousand horsepower really isn't that difficult. Having to produce a bunch of engines in a row to produce a thousand horsepower for like the rest of the season, that is difficult because that's a whole lot of parts that they're going to need. They could do it. They could. Will it happen? Absolutely not. So let's go ahead and set that thousand horsepower idea over here in the folder that says no one gives a damn. Sorry for cussing. So that's just not happening right now. As much as we want it, not happening. Set it to the side. The other solution, and NASCAR obviously talked about this with Elton Sawyer, is they want to work with Goodyear to create a better tire. Well, I a little over a month, that's going to be really pushing it on trying to get a tire that can wear and you know wear out quickly, a soft tire. So you already have the softest compound Goodyear makes in your arsenal. It's sitting, ready to go. It is the wet weather tire. The wet weather tire is the softest compound that Goodyear makes because it's a wet weather tire. It needs to be able to try to create traction. So last year at the All-Star Race at North Wilkesboro, we saw the wet weather tire make its debut and it was an arguably semi-damp track. It dried out super fast, but the racing was pretty good before that. When they went to the slicks, much like we saw at Richmond just a couple weeks ago, the racing became abhorrent. It was terrible. Nobody wanted to watch it after that. So if you have that tire and it is readily available right now, we know that less of a contact patch should help these cars out, right? The treaded tire, less of a contact patch than what the slick tires have. The problem with this is that soft compound tire does end up running faster lap times than what the slick tire does. Again, because it's softer. Same thing in Formula One, same thing in any car. When you put the softest compound on, it's only good for two or three laps of really, really fast driving, and then it wears away. And that's what you're going to see here. So while the lap time might be faster initially, or for a couple laps, it will start to fade. And here's where I don't want NASCAR to panic. 
We know that the tire is going to be faster. We know it's going to wear out, and it's going to wear out very quickly. It's going to go from a treaded tire down to a slick tire in not that many laps. Although, this track has been repaved at North Wilkesboro, hopefully more than paper thin like it was out at Sonoma, or we're going to have to deal with another Denny Hamlin, Marcus Smith feud, and I think we all might be Denny Hamlin out for just like a week, and we got to take a step back for a little bit. Use that tire. It's going to wear out quickly, and if you have to use four of them, over the course of the all-star race and everybody has to pit so be it and don't throw competition cautions if you know the tire is only going to last 50 laps say i have no idea on the length of the the tire life of this uh wet weather tire but say it lasts 50 laps don't throw a comp, comp caution at 50 100 150 whatever distance we're going to be running don't do that let teams make the decision the same thing that everybody raved about bristol because it was interesting you had a lot of different tire strategies. you had guys on video game tires blasting through the field as everybody else was trying to conserve their tires other people trying to run long josh barry at the end of the race ultimately didn't end up working right there do that it's much more compelling than watching these guys go out there on the slick tires with the current short track package that we have and put on a very boring race we saw this happen last year at north wilkesboro that was a absolutely boring race it was very boring it wasn't very good kyle larson would have lapped the field if the if nascar would have let him what made it enjoyable was the fact that they were back at north wilkesboro everybody got distracted by this oh look something shiny over here let's pay attention to that and ignore the fact that there's a major problem happening on track and it's the fact that everybody's just playing follow the leader right here once they switch over to slicks the newness the newness of North Wilkesboro, even though it's old, you know what I'm saying here, that's going to wear off this year. And people are going to pay much more attention to the actual on-track product, which, like I said, last year, not that good. So you have to try something, right? With the Gen 6 car, it was terrible on intermediate tracks. So NASCAR experimented because the All-Star Race was at an intermediate track. And then they ultimately found a package that they liked. Again, I don't know if we all loved it, but they did. Certainly, uh, there's going to be like YouTube and TikTok accounts probably like five or six years from now that are like, dude, the Gen 6 races in 2019, 2020, 2021 were so fire. Look how close they were. There was terrible racing, absolutely terrible racing. Uh, what we have on intermediates now with the Gen 7 car, so much better. So when they switched to the Gen 7 car, it flipped. The Gen 6 car, bad on intermediates, great on short tracks and road courses. The Gen 7 car, great on intermediates, bad on short tracks and road courses. Did I get that wrong? Gen 6, bad on intermediates, great on short tracks and road courses. Gen 7, bad on short tracks and road courses, great on intermediates. You guys got it now. So use this as your experiment time. Right, this race doesn't count for anything, although people are paying, I guess, like $150 for a ticket to North Wilkesboro. I don't necessarily recommend doing that. You can spend $150 and get great seats for the Indy 500 the next weekend, and you're going to have a much better race, more than likely, and experience. Unless you just want to go to North Wilkesboro, which then I completely understand that. But they need to try something because what they have right now, it just is not working. And I think everybody knows that, right? It's abundantly clear. If you look at, I had to pull up some stats here because it was really, really bad. Shout out to um, Auto Racing Analytics on Twitter, at AR underscore analytics. If you like numbers and you're a nerd like I am when it comes to that, this person, this account is a great follow. I don't have the time in my life to break everything down like they do. They do a phenomenal job. Go follow them. But they did post the total number of real passes over the last five weeks. So total number of real passes in the last five non-drafting oval races. These are passes measured at the start finish line, removing the five laps following a restart and pit stops. Bristol and Richmond are a little affected by people staying out on long runs, hoping for caution. So there's the little bit of disclaimer here. But the total number of real passes at Bristol, because it was absolute chaos with the tires, you had 1,391 passes. At Richmond, 511. Fe Las Vegas, 486. Phoenix, 306. And this past weekend at Martinsville, there were only 220 real passes on track. So you'll always hear NASCAR kind of tout the number of green flag passes that they have. And that is true. There are green flag passes are passes for position that are recorded on track. And while that's certainly a stat that you can, I guess, I guess if you really want to tout, it's not that indicative of actual passes. So NASCAR says that the total number of green flag passes last weekend at Martinsville was 2,129 compared to the real number of passes 
of 220. That is not good at all. You're looking at basically 1,900 passes in the green flag passes that just were really not actual passes. They were either happened on a restart or happened during a green flag pit stop sequence or... Yeah, that's really where it has to be. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying here. It's just not indicative of good racing. So the package is broken. They need to fix it. And they need to use the all-star race to get that done. Like I said, having a groove tire available, I think, is probably the solution. They're going to work with Goodyear. A narrower tire is the ultimate answer here. Like, I, that's what they absolutely need to do. Again, that's going to require a different rim, a different tire that has to be produced, um... And it's also going to, going to require a spacer to be put on all four uh, all four sides of these cars because, well, all four sides, all four wheels of these cars because it's going to look really ridiculous if you're running a, you know, inch or two inch narrower tire and they don't stick out to the edge of the fender and it's just inset right here. And you look like one of those stupid bro trucks that takes off their wide tires and puts the stock tires back on and you're like, well, that just looks goofy as hell. Sorry for cussing. So... They need to try it, right? You don't have a groove tire, but you do have a treaded tire available with the wet weather package. Go out there and put it on and see what happens. We know it's going to have a faster lap time to start. What we don't really know is what the exact fall off is going to be. I'm sure the teams certainly know what it will be, but it has to, you have to try it. You at least have to give it a go and see what can happen here and how fast those tires will wear out. Maybe it'll produce an interesting race because what you have right now, like I said, just is not working. So use the also race as an experiment. Let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.